Well, thanks, Jay. It's, uh, it's great to be working with you again for at least the next 45 minutes or so. Uh, and uh, thank you for inviting me to this NBR conference on the economics of AI. Uh, it is great to see so many of my former colleagues from the University of Toronto. I, I will admit, uh, you know, the economic implications of AI, it, it, is a, it is a bit of a daunting topic. Uh, and I, I've learned a lot from, from you uh, and from your colleagues. So uh, I'm particularly looking forward to our discussion and, and hopefully uh, uh, <clears throat> there can be a bit of back and forth. Um, I am going to start with some, some, uh, some opening remarks. I, I do want to say a few words about uh, the economic implications of AI and particularly what are the implications for a central bank. Around the world, digitalization is pulling our economies in new directions. And artificial intelligence, and, and particularly its newest offspring, uh, Gen AI, uh, is accelerating that pull. It is still early days, but we're already seeing AI is disrupting existing industries and creating new ones. How AI will affect the global economy, and indeed humanity, is on all our minds. It's easy to find enthusiasts who say AI is going to take us to the land of plenty. It's also easy to find doomsayers who say we're headed for a bleak future with a few big winners and many losers. I would be wary of anyone who claims to know where AI will take us. There's just too much uncertainty to be confident. We don't know how quickly AI is going to continue to advance, and we don't know the timing and the extent of its economic and social impacts. But that doesn't mean we can't gain insights into what could happen. The past is still a useful starting point, the laws of economics still matter, and people still respond to incentives. And that includes prices. As central bankers, we care a lot about prices. Our mandate is to keep price inflation low and stable. So what does the latest wave of AI and more broadly ongoing digitalization mean for what we do at the Bank of Canada? I'd suggest there are two broad elements. First, we need to better understand how AI will affect workers, consumers, the economy, and inflation. And second, we need to use AI ourselves to best deliver on our mandate for Canadians. So in my remarks this morning, I'm going to focus mostly on how AI could impact the economy through productivity, through employment, and through price-setting behavior. Then I'm going to uh, discuss a few of the implications for monetary policy, and finally I'll say a few words about how we're using AI at the Bank of Canada. How we apply our monetary policy tools depends on our assessment of broad price pressures in the economy and where we think inflation is headed. And a key input is our estimate of the economy's maximum non-inflationary growth rate. We call this potential. Potential growth depends on the supply of labor and the productivity of that labor. AI is expected to mainly impact labor productivity. When labor productivity is rising, the economy can grow more quickly without causing inflation. So the question we need to tackle seems simple enough. How and when will AI affect labor productivity? AI has all the hallmarks of a general purpose technology or GPT, meaning a technology that can have significant and wide ranging effects on an entire economy. But how large and how wide ranging is very hard to predict. And forecasting the timing is no easier. We know from history that it takes years for GPT to diffuse through the economy. We also know that the first applications are typically less transformative than the new businesses and new business models that eventually emerge. This all suggests we won't see the full effects of this wave of AI anytime soon. Nevertheless, we are seeing encouraging early results from firm level studies on AI. In one study, German companies that used AI were found to be more productive. In another, consultants at a global consulting firm on average, were on average able to produce better work and do that work faster using AI. A third study found AI helped call center employees <clears throat> be more efficient by sharing best practices. 
And some of the biggest gains can be seen in coding, where Gen AI has half the time needed to complete some coding tasks. Still, these studies can't tell us how AI will affect the broader economy. To understand that, we need to consider the productivity effect across all major sectors. One estimate is that AI could automate 25% of all work tasks in the United States and boost total factor productivity, or TFP, by 9% over the next decade. A similar sustained improvement in TFP in Canada would raise average income per person by roughly $4,000 a year. This productivity boost is not just from automating tasks. As workers in lower productivity jobs are replaced by AI, they're freed up to fill more productive jobs in the economy, and new products and new services emerge. These latter two effects provide most of the positive impact on productivity. However, more pessimistic es estimates suggest that AI might have only a modest impact on productivity. These assessments take the view that fewer tasks can be effectively automated. AI could also create negative outcomes, such as amplifying internet addiction, and enabling malicious actors. These adverse effects could substantially decrease the net positive impact of AI. As we look at the effects of AI on the broader economy, we also need to ask if this technology will be transformative enough to significantly boost productivity growth. Or will AI simply be the latest innovation in a chain of innovations like the sewing machine, evolution of telecommunications, that have kept productivity growth rising at its historical pace. This matters a lot, because productivity growth plays a key role in determining how fast the economy can grow without sparking inflation. So what is actually happening? The infrastructure needed to make AI broadly available is being built quickly. AI platforms are sprouting up and it's getting easier for businesses, both large and small, to access the technology. But we're still looking for the new products and services and the new business models that will transform efficiency and productivity. AI adoption and its full effects on productivity will play out over many years. In the long run, we can expect AI to boost productivity. Higher productivity allows for higher wages, more spending, without pushing up inflation. But what about the short run? Already strong investment in AI technologies is boosting demand in the economy. The run up in equity prices is supporting consumption, as is the boom in the hiring for workers with AI and related skills. Electricity demand is also surging as new data centers are built to accommodate the enormous computing requirements of AI. This all suggests that in the short run, AI could boost demand more than it adds to supply through faster productivity growth. And if that happens, AI adoption may add to inflationary pressures in the near term. One of the biggest questions is whether AI will be something that helps people do their jobs better, or whether it simply replaces jobs. There's a lot of talk and some good research on this issue. Studies suggest that a significant share of all job-related tasks could be done by AI in the next few decades. Over the very long run, machines could be doing a lot of the tasks people do now. Does this mean we're doomed to a surge in long-run unemployment? Economic history offers us many lessons on the effects of technological change. Over the last 200 years, the displacement effects, or the jobs lost, due to changes in technology, have been outweighed by the countervailing effects, or the increases in labor demand arising from these innovations. This includes jobs that are created because of increased capital investment, the advent of new goods and services, and greater demand for tasks that can't be automated. To put it another way, the, from the mechanization of agriculture, to the emergence of the assembly line, to the introduction of computing and the internet, Techno technological change has ultimately been a net positive for overall employment. But some argue this time could be different. In an AI-dominated world, the displacement effects could be bigger and the countervailing effects more muted. AI could shrink the number of non-automated tasks so much that there isn't enough work left for the displaced workers. And if many of the new goods and services are created by the AI itself, 
the labor market may not benefit from the increased demand. In addition, in past change cycles, technology was diffused over a prolonged period, so labor had time to adjust. But this time, the adoption could happen much faster, creating more disruption and a loss of livelihoods that will be difficult to replace. So far, we don't have much evidence that labor is being displaced by AI at rates that would lead to declines in total employment. If anything, digitalization and the commercialization of AI have likely been a net job creator in Canada. Employment in computer systems and design and related services, which is a proxy for digitalization, has risen 48% since the end of 2019, compared with 6%, a 6% 6 increase in employment in the rest of the economy. This recent growth builds on an existing trend. While overall employment is up 17% over the past decade, employment in digitalization-related segments has more than doubled. But we know there are probably more profound effects to come. As AI becomes more established in the economy and its impacts more transformative, it could end up destroying more jobs than it creates. And the people who lose their work to automation may struggle to find new opportunities. This is a concern for all of us. Understanding and shaping the labor market impacts will be increasingly important as AI continues to advance and diffuse through our economies. In addition to productivity in the labor market, AI, also, AI may also affect how businesses set prices. There is already evidence that digitally intensive firms change prices more frequently. For us central bankers, this means the Phillips curve might be steeper than previously thought. When combined with a more shock-prone world, this suggests that inflation could be more volatile than it was in the 25 years leading up to the pandemic. AI could also affect the level of competition in the economy, though its impact is ambiguous. Initially, AI-intensive startups could seize market share by undercutting incumbents. This would increase competition and lower prices. However, AI could also result in market, a market dominated by a handful of companies with monopoly power. In this scenario, AI would ultimately lead to less competition and higher prices. The monopoly effects are easy to imagine, with several superstar firms already dominating their sectors. Fortunately, we do have competition authorities to deal with undue market power, but these authorities will need to keep pace. All this means central banks need to be closely attuned to how, effect, how AI will affect inflation, both indirectly through overall demand and supply and directly through price setting behavior. So what does this all mean for central banks? We know that AI could have profound effects on the economy, but we also know that the timing, the magnitude, and even the direction of these effects is uncertain. So how do monetary policymakers manage this uncertainty? When you enter a dark room, you don't go charging in. You cautiously feel your way around, and you try and find the light switch. That's what we're doing. What we central banks need is more light. This means better information, along with research and analysis, on how technology is diffused its impact on businesses and on workers, and its effect on the overall economy and inflation. And to this end, I encourage academics to work with businesses and policymakers to better understand and predict the impacts of AI. And I applaud the National Bureau of Economic Research and my former colleagues at the University of Toronto for this conference series, which is putting a spotlight on the economics of AI. We can also use scenarios to better understand the potential effects of AI and manage the risks so we get more of the good and less of the bad. For example, in a recent speech, Gita Gopana, Deputy Managing Director of the IMF, explored how the adoption of AI could worsen the next recession for workers. She noted that in previous downturns, most automation-related job losses happened in the first year of the recession, and those jobs never came back. Widespread of adoption of AI could make this problem worse because more jobs could be ripe for automation. AI adoption could also lead to financial stability issues. 
Banks and financial institutions are investing in AI to improve customer service, to enhance compliance and risk management, and to better assess credit and liquidity risks. In principle, these investments should improve efficiency and stability. But there are pitfalls. Operational risks could become concentrated in a few third-party service providers, and an event at one could quickly spread through the entire financial system. The predictive ability of AI can deteriorate unexpectedly, suffer from hallucinations, or be biased and discriminatory. And AI makes everything move faster, which could amplify severe market runs and hurting behavior in times of market volatility. Scenarios help us ask tough questions about how monetary and, pol how monetary and financial policies should respond to the risks we are facing. And they all also help us be proactive in protecting our economies and our financial systems. Finally, let me say a few words about how we're using AI at central banks. It's not, AI is not just for startups and, and tech giants. Many central banks are already using AI as they strive to deliver on their mandates. At the Bank of Canada, we use AI to forecast inflation, economic activity, and the demand for banknotes. We use it to track sentiment in key sectors of the economy. We use it to clean and verify regulatory data and to improve efficiency and de-risk our operations. But I think it's fair to say we've only begun to explore this technology. With very large and highly disaggregated data sets now available, there is huge potential to use AI to better understand how consumers and businesses are behaving uh, and how businesses are setting prices. To take a full advantage of the potential of AI, we need to invest in data and computing power. We also need to ensure that we have, this, we have staff with the skills uh, that will make the most of this investment. And we're going to need to leverage outside expertise. And that's why we're so excited to be part of the new Toronto Innovation Center run by the Bank for International Settlements. The Innovation Center is designed to encourage collaboration among academics, the private sector, and central banks to explore the latest technologies. As we deploy AI, we also need to consider ethical implications. It's not always easy to strike the right balance between moving forward and fostering innovation and taking the time and care to be responsible and secure. At the Bank of Canada, we have principles that guide our use of AI. For example, we need to be transparent when we're using AI for a task, and we need to have safeguards in place to ensure we are appropriately skeptical when we use AI to generate content or analysis. It's time for me to wrap up. The recent advances in AI, and Gen AI in particular, have the potential to transform economies around the world. However, a lot of uncertainty remains. We all need more light. We need academics and businesses to work together and examine how technology is diffused through the economy. And we need to better understand how AI will affect productivity, employment, price setting behavior, and inflation. This work is going to take some time. And in the interim, we should use increasingly informed scenarios to help manage our uncertainty. We are still in the early days of what could be a transformative technological shift. We don't know yet what will come, but we can shape the future path. For central banks, that means maintaining price and financial stability in the face of disruptive technological change. And it means leveraging AI to do our jobs better. Thank you very much.